Hey, what's up, guys? Eric Forner here, the CEO of Passive Income Blueprints. And this is, I believe, let's look real quick, episode six already. Let's see with Barb McGowan. Let's... Episode six today um, with Barb McGowan. And I'm super, super excited to have her on. She's really into all kinds of different things. She's a serial entrepreneur. Um, she's a beast of a woman when it comes to any kind of branding. She has a backstory that you guys can definitely relate with. And if you're struggling a marketer, if you're just thinking about getting started or whatever it is and whatever kind of niche, even different type of niches, this is a story you're going to have to listen to 100%. Without further ado, I'm going to bring in Barb McGowan. Barb, how are you doing today? What up? I'm doing good. How are you? Man, doing great. It's super, super uh, exciting to actually have you on here, you know, uh, just because, you know, just where we've come from already, right? And where you've come from already and the success you've already had, right? So, you know, um, for those of you guys that don't know, I've been with Barb or I've known Barb for quite some time now. It's like my sister, uh, in, you know, from another mother, right? In a sense, because we've come from the same roots uh, in our same background for most part, like different places, obviously, but we also learned and the, a lot of the skills and techniques from the same teachers as well. And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor to Barb and she's going to give us a little back history on her. And then we're just going to go with the flow. It's not really strategically done. Uh, we just come in here and we just wing it every time, drop tons of value. So if you guys are catching us on the hashtag or live, hashtag live on the replay, hashtag replay, please. All right, Barb, just read a rip. Yes. Thank you for having me on. Um, I feel like every time we chat, it's just so juicy and I get stuff out of it. So um, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll start by giving kind of a little bit of backstory because I feel like that's super important to explain like how I'm here and how I got to this point. Um, and also what something we've been doing with our, uh, our, our mastermind clients is kind of having them do this exercise. And so I think that's going to be really valuable and relevant. But kind of like my backstory is, um, and I'll go way back. I'll throw maybe some stuff you haven't heard before. All right. But, so growing up, um, I never wanted to be perceived. Like I don't, you know, I didn't want to be in the spotlight. Didn't want anybody to look at me, to notice me. I wanted to just blend in and just be left alone. Mm -hmm. Um, but what made it hard for me is that I was like a really good basketball player. And my older sister was like, homecoming queen, valedictorian, all that. She was a senior when I was a freshman. So mm -hmm. all of her friends were like, oh, hey, like trying to talk to me. And I'm like, oh my God, just <laughs> like, don't talk to me. Leave right. me. And uh, I've told the story um, a few times, but it's, and it's kind of nasty. But before basketball games, I'd be so nervous that I'd be, everybody would be watching me perform, you know, and I would like throw up before like half of my games, like barf into a trash can or into a drinking fountain or on my shoes. I ruined my Charles Barkley shoes. Oh, no. Anyway, all that to say that like, i just felt like this, my whole life felt this pressure of like being seen and having to be perfect and having to perform, you know? Mm -hmm. So fast forward through working in retail, like I worked at uh, Blockbuster Video, may it rest in peace. I worked at Borders, the bookstore, also rest in peace. And then I transitioned to uh, to working in investment management. And I was at that job for like seven years. Talk about imposter syndrome. If anybody knows what imposter syndrome is, where you like, I'm an imposter. I, I'm not competent. I shouldn't be here. Like, talk about that. Like going right. to retail to working in investment. The world's the largest investment management firm, most respected. Anyway, but really, and this is like definitely a huge part of my story is um, like I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. And that's really like working at that job was the epitome of rock bottom for me. I got to a point of, um, you know, again, had to keep up this perfect facade of I'm this adult that has all her stuff together. And, you know, there are problems. I don't have problems. I have all my stuff together. I know how to do everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that really came to a breaking point. And I ended up going to rehab uh, leaving that job and moving back to my hometown, which is where I live now. Um, my whole family lives here. So it ended up definitely being a blessing, but, um, something that I learned, and I think this is kind of the huge takeaway that I learned that I can pass on to other people. Well, two, 
number one, the hardships and the obstacles and challenges and the ways that I really suffered in my past, like getting over that stuff has allowed me to learn different skills and be more compassionate and really offer myself in ways that I couldn't have done before, or I couldn't have done without those challenges and those obstacles, but to my audience and allows me to be of service to them in a unique way that nobody else can do. Like, yeah, that person can maybe serve you in better or different ways. And right. that person over there can serve you in different ways. Nobody can do me like, like I can. And the same is true of everybody. Like the same is true of everyone watching this right now. Um, is that we, because of our unique experiences, we are uniquely equipped to serve our people, the people that gravitate to us and resonate with us. 100%. And, and so that comes through when we're authentic in our content and having built up this kind of persona for so long of I'm perfect. I have all my stuff together, like that whole thing. Right. Which really led me down this road of having this worldview that led to my, you know, my addiction. Um, like it kind of like was a rubber band that once let go, it like snapped in the opposite direction. I was like, I can't put up any facade. I can't put up any false self. I have to just be my real authentic self, not just because it feels better, but because I don't want to die. And right. when, I, when I try to act like something I'm not, that's what lets, that's the path I'm going down. And so that's why authenticity, not just in a business sense, but like in a human being sense is so important but the way that that ties in in for anyone watching um, and creating content out there is that authenticity is what connects us to other people, our people, the people that we can then uniquely serve who are going to be our raving fans that are never going to leave our side because we're just mm -hmm. like, it's like your best friend that you met in like kindergarten. You know what I mean? Like you exactly. buy together. And so anyway, that was kind of a, a long backstory, but I think that that's kind of what's brought me to this point and kind of the value that I'm able to add is <laughs> yeah, I've done a lot of suffering so that you don't have right. to. Right. So like kind of like an over, like an overview on all that. So basically you're a drug addict, you were struggling, right? Good thing you had a good family uh, mm -hmm. to support you. Um, you're a real introvert, introverted person early on in, in your basically adulthood, yeah. right? You even to the point to where you would throw up, you know, even before basketball games, right? So even being in front of me right now is a huge feat, right? So for anybody that, that, that does not think they can overcome like obstacles and things in their life, or they feel like they're not worth or valued enough, you're absolutely wrong because Barb has scaled from being in a position of the lowest you could possibly be um, to where, you know, she's a, an extrovert in a sense. Now she's still mm -hmm. an introvert, but she ex she, she uses her skills in a certain type of way because you're not going to find Barb running around the mall all the time, right? She's still going to be at home in her Snuggie, but still she's learned to adapt and uh, overcome and actually use it as a, as, as a, a what do you call it? Uh, like as a strength. A, as, yeah. yeah, a strength. And so you took, you've taken a weakness and you adapted and actually bended your life. So now fast forward to today, um, you've been through all kinds of different things, right? You were uh, with Barnes, not Barnes Noble, but uh, Borders, Borders, and, and 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 Blockbuster, and then you kind of you know transformed into uh, the management of money, like right, your uh, right, your management of money, right? What, what mm -hmm. do you were money management, investment right? management, investment yeah. manager, yeah. So you became an investment manager, and now you are a six figure earner online, like basically have your own online business and you've had more than one and you have a lot of things and a lot of your hands in a lot of different avenues right so let's start talking about that like where do you start with this online thing like you know and, and where did you see the whole of market what do you what do you provide value for dude such a good question um so yeah that's everything like we always talk about market research and iterating right like doing something getting market feedback and then iterating, like changing what you're doing to get closer and closer incrementally to the perfect solution or the perfect, you know, outcome that you can then turn around and serve your clients with. Right. So for me, where my journey started was, you know, I was I was working as a teacher. Um, I was a STEM teacher at a nonprofit like in rural California where like, you know, a half hour drive from where I live. Discovered affiliate marketing. And I was like, I can do this. Like I can promote other people's products and that, you know, that right. whole thing. So I started creating content for the first, I don't know, 
six months or so, um, I was strictly doing affiliate marketing and did well. Like I was able to quit my nine to five job after five months of creating content. And um, then it kind of turned to, okay, I have about 50 extra hours a week now. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I going to do with that time? And I do have this love for teaching and coaching and mentoring. Like that's always been the case. And there are so many different examples of like where that came from in my life. But I kind of started thinking like, hey, maybe I want to like coach, but I had no clue what to like, how to do anything, um, how to build an offer, you know, right. and that, I think that there's this, or at least for me, there was this disconnect between, oh, doing coaching and actually building an offer, like a, a coherent, cohesive offer that is specific and addresses specific problems and pain points. 100%. But that's actually kind of how you and I like met and be started to become close was through that process. You know, like you mentioned, we, we had the same roots, the same mentors and, um, but that's really like where my whole paradigm shifted. Like I could go from, I could take a lot of the existing skill sets that I had learned from affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, I could take my existing skill sets I had from all the years of, you know, doing different things in the kind of training and teaching and coaching capacity. <clears throat> And then put it all together and make this offer based on all of the feedback that I have gotten from my market, which is, I am so confused. Like how, what is, how even does affiliate marketing work? How do I right. create content? Like all of that kind of stuff. So then I built an offer around teaching, you know, new folks how to get started with affiliate marketing, how to set up their business, how to, you know, start creating content and all that. Well, like I said, market feedback and market research and iteration is like super important in everything we do. So after a few months, I got to a point of realizing <clears throat> like a lot of the questions that I was getting, like listen to your audience when they ask right. questions and you will begin to put together this picture of, okay, this is what they're really getting at because they're thinking of it from a problem perspective. You as the, the head honcho need to be thinking of it from the solution perspective. So if they're saying, okay, but how do I make good content like should i just copy what everyone else is doing should, you know what i mean so a lot of those questions a lot of questions about content and not how like why would i tell my story in my content like just a complete kind of lack of understanding of like what really came intuitively for me and then it kind of clicked like oh what they're really asking is how do you build an effective personal brand and create content around that. And so then the light bulb kind of came on for me. And that's when I, you know, gravitated to teaching people how to build an effective personal brand and build all of the kind of systems and automations and um, even, you know, high ticket offers around that personal brand that people, right. then, you know, turn into a business and sell. So, yeah. So I think we, I've seen you on the leaderboard in a company that we all well know. Um, and then we've seen each other there. But you're you you seen a hole in the market just like I did, right? Um, you seen holes that I didn't see, and then maybe I seen holes that you didn't see, and so we, we both became coaches. And you had your coaching program for for quite some time. But kind of like let's hear the like what 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 transition there, right? I know you're in some, some, some into it, some other stuff, and I'm not sure if you want to reveal that yet. But like either way, you know, it, it affiliate marketing has taken an open doors for you that you probably never thought possible. Mm -hmm. And that's in, in return for myself, right? Not when you first start up, all of a sudden it just gives, it's going to be sky's the limit. But I noticed for myself, when I first got into affiliate marketing, I started engaging with people mm -hmm. at a higher level, right? I, like all my friends are six figure earners, like mm -hmm. everybody I know now. So I started putting myself around those people and I started, it started opening doors to different things and opportunities. So you you had your coaching program, your coaching business, and you still have your 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 Facebook group, which uh, is right here. Um, let me see here, Facebook group, TikTok as well, and we are live in your Facebook group right now as well, Brar. But um, yeah, just to let you guys know, she still has her Facebook group, and I'm gonna let you guys, I'm gonna let you talk on like kind of like the transition of what take taken place after you made your six figures and now you're transitioning into what and like kind of what's happened up re you know recently I, i'll let you spill the beans yeah i mean i don't want to get too much into detail at this point i will definitely be doing that in the future but suffice right. it to say 
that what you were saying about affiliate marketing opening doors, like never ever in my wildest freaking dreams could I have ever imagined or predicted or like Hollywood couldn't have written a, a better script for the things that had to fall in place. You know, like I'm such a big believer that when you take a leap of faith, even though it feels scary and uncomfortable and it's terrifying, but it makes you grow, keep pursuing that, keep failing forward, keep taking imperfect action and you'll be rewarded. And it might not even be in the way that you think. Like the stuff that I was journaling about at the beginning of 2022 is it's not that like, it's not what I thought, but the outcome is kind of the same. So it's interesting right. that kind of your intention will inform, you know, what ends up happening, but it just not, might not be the path that you thought you would take. Right. But what I will say is number one, take that leap of faith, um, pursue the things that are growth oriented, that make you feel uncomfortable, that make you feel like, wow, I'm not the smartest person in the room anymore. It's all these people around me. You know, there's, there's so much to be said for the people you surround yourself with, just like what you were saying. Um, but the, the amount of things that had to fall in place, like starting affiliate marketing, um, really having that hunger and drive to leave my nine to five job, because that was honestly my biggest motivator, you know, right. Um, then parlaying those skills into a coaching offer and then scaling that and then seeing that hole in the market of nobody's teaching about personal branding. Like everybody's just kind of saying, copy everybody else's content. And that's really not effective, nor does it help you distinguish yourself amongst other people who are all out there selling or promoting the same thing or something similar. Um, but, and it's just like this crazy, like set of circumstances that had to happen for me to then discover this kind of other avenue, this other like source of income that I'm going to be pursuing or that I am pursuing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it all, it all started because I started doing affiliate marketing. Like I started creating content. I started meeting people and network with, networking with people. And I think networking has kind of like a dirty like connotation to it. Like, oh, I hate networking. It means you right. have to go out and be fake and schmooze with people. That's not it at all. Like if you always lead with offering value, you will never go wrong. Go to somebody's Facebook group. Like I went to your Facebook group. You came to mine and we just like did this and got to, you know, share kind of gold nuggets and you give a little bit of value to each other's audiences. And like, that's networking, you guys, like going out and offering value with no expectation of something in return. But what you will find is you will get so much more in return than you ever anticipated or ever understood could happen. And it's not just money. It's like opportunities, it's relationships, it's, you know, like friendships. It, all it, kinds of stuff. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. A happy pocket full of money, huh? Yes. Whatever you whatever you want to achieve, help others to achieve it first. It will come back to you sevenfold. Yes, it will. One hundred percent. It's living proof on both ends. So I know that you you've seen another opportunity to you know capitalize and make money. Uh, I guess you could say to more of a passive income mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. But we we won't talk about that. But basically, what happened was you had your coaching business and you had your Facebook group and you know you started your clients, but you were taking a shift. And then when you took that shift, um, we kind of, I kind of intercepted you. Mm -hmm. Right. And then like, talk about that. And like, you know, you know, cause I'll let you open the, the beans on that one, but yeah. there was a shift and I reached out to Barb and I'll just kind of let you guys know how that went. Yeah. It was, it was funny. Like you, it was, again, this is that kind of thing where it's like right person, right place, right time. But Eric reached out to me and was like, basically, Hey, do you want to like, come in and coach with PIB. And it was literally like just the perfect timing. Um, and I don't think I would have said yes to any other person. Cause like Eric mentioned, you're like my brother from another mother. <laughs> and um, like just the, what I have gotten to know of you in the last like couple years in terms of like your integrity. And I think more importantly, well, maybe at equal importance, but your integrity and how much you care about your, the success of your clients, um, like to the exclusion of your own ego. You know what I mean? I think that that's so important and that's so telling about, you know, what makes a good coach and what makes, um, like what makes you somebody that people gravitate to and want to work with is that your integrity and that you care about other people more than yourself. 
And just like what you were saying with a happy pocket full of money, when you give that away, you get it back. Mm -hmm. And Indeed. that's, I think, how you operate. And that's why I was just like, yeah, this is a no brainer. Like this will allow me to not only stay plugged into like the coaching and the mentoring aspect, which is really what I love. And that's what I like seeing that light bulb turn on for people and seeing people mm -hmm. start with, I don't think I can do this or I feel discouraged or whatever going from that to um, seeing success in whatever, right. whatever capacity that is, you know, whether that's gaining confidence or, you know, making money or starting something new. Right. There was a client the other day that said, one of his coaching clients just got a high ticket commission. And he's like, this almost feels like, like a parent being proud of a child's yeah. success. And I was like, ah, oh, it just like warms my heart. Um, but anyway, so yeah, said yes to the opportunity because I think of who you are and who I know you to be. Um, and I want to be not only with a program that's going to be making an impact in such a huge way in 2023 and beyond, but I want to be working with people like you, people like Anthony, you know, people like Robert, so, people like Betty. Yeah. Who, um, who just, what you see is what you get, you know, integrity, caring about other people. Like that's just everything. And that's right. the kind of community that, that I want to be in. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a blessing bringing you on because, you know, just your background with branding and actually helping the new person like overcome those little obstacles, even posting their first video or, you know, going whatever it is live or you have, you know, different strategies and ways to think about things to open up people's minds to more possibilities, right? Because people, I think they limit themselves, right? We have a lot of limiting oh, yeah. beliefs as, as human beings. We limit on what we think we're capable of doing and talking to a coach such as, Bar McGowan, she is a true coach and she's made her first six figures and she brought it on to this. So she does have, a, you know, some something to stand on when she talks. And so she is an authority figure and she's able to help you break down those little, little barriers, even your scheduling, your routines, all of that stuff does come into play on where we could find time to help you build your business because it's not all about, hey, let's just put our links in our bio. You know, there's are these valleys of despairs that we go through as entrepreneurs, even emotionally in our own lives. And I noticed it for myself. And I didn't, if I didn't have a community or like even a mentor, like with Brad, you know, rest in peace. I went, I've cried in front of him before, you know, because my struggles, I was so, I was at the top and, and I just didn't know, make no money. And I was like, in the bottom, I just wanted to give up. But if I didn't have anybody to go talk to as a mentor, I probably would have given up, right? Mm -hmm. Or something, right? And so it's just really, it's really important to really not only know that you're part of passive income blueprints, but you're also there to provide so much value, you know, to help and actually give the support people need. And that's teaching people how to have a sustainable business. Now, can you, can you like give us the definition on like the difference of like a, a hobby to a sustainable business and, and like what the difference really is? Because people think, oh yeah, I made $10,000 and I'm running an affiliate marketing business. But can you di differentiate the two for us? For sure. Okay. So like anybody can go viral and have a $10,000 a month, like, and that's luck. And there are that, I would say 0.01% of people that can just vomit out whatever content on TikTok, put a link in their bio and generate, a, you know, a six figure income. But that is, that's the, that's the stuff that you see, you know, and that's what people think that affiliate marketing is. That's not like period. And if that person's TikTok account gets banned and they have to start a new one, like <laughs> newsflash, that's, you know, not only is your primary traffic source gone, but um, you don't have any, any redundancies, any backups. And I don't just mean having a backup TikTok account. I mean, having an email list built, having a Facebook group, ha being on multiple platforms. Um, and having a, a group of people that is going to be surrounding you that they're, you know, those are your raving fans. And those are the people that are going to be like, where's Barb's account? Like, do you know what I mean? That are going right. to track you down because you are their person. Um, And so relying on like virality or it's like, you can take away someone's TikTok account and they'll just start over doing the exact same thing. If you took away my TikTok account, that's fine. Like I have a Facebook group, I have an email list, I have YouTube, 
a lot of my sales actually come from YouTube, which is crazy to me because I haven't created content on YouTube in a while, but it's like, like clockwork. Um, but so the difference between just a long-term sustainable business is you have processes and systems and redundancies in place. It's very much like, you know, any other like brick and mortar or, um, you know, other online business where you have systems in place and it's not mm -hmm. just you're, you know, winging it and hoping that you go viral and like, what are you going to do? Go create TikToks for the rest of your life? <laughs> No, do you know what you're, I mean? you're, you're not like, I, I, I don't even really like creating TikToks anymore, you know, maybe yeah. one or here, two or there, but because we got to that stage, but either way, like, you know, it, it really drives me nuts when, when I see individuals on top of leaderboards and these other programs after they spent all this money and then all of a sudden they go down to this valley of despair mm -hmm. um, and they're a lot, a lot of them end up on our calendars. Uh, and I'm not calling anybody out, but there's a lot, believe it or not, you guys, um, there's a lot that do hit these virality buttons, I guess you could say. And it's like the easy button because before on TikTok or, you know, as of, before, you know, I guess a couple months ago, it was really easy to get a viral to get traction. Now, if you have a call to action to, with a link in your bio and you have a video, get five to 50,000 views, there's a good chance you're going to make one to 10 K on that one video. If you have the right offer and behind it. And so it's not, it's not hard to get that traction, but to duplicate that process over and over without feeling like an imposter because you're copying everybody else's content in order to get that traction. And then all of a sudden the algorithm smacks you in the face because they're not pushing out everybody's content. Now you got to become yourself. You got to learn how to brand yourself. And now it becomes a duplicatable process where you can actually brand yourself enough to promote any product you want because you're selling yourself. Yes. It does not matter. It doesn't matter if it's cars, trucks, planes, boats, automobiles, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're going to promote, right? And that's that's the that's the that's the difference in what we're doing here at Passive Income Blueprints. And I'm just going to throw it out there that this is the new style of affiliate marketing. Now, it's it's not new as far as marketing concerned, but nobody's ever put the two together because all affiliate marketers were instant gratification. They want that money right now, right now. They don't want to work with anybody. They don't want to build a business or a network. They'd rather just rely on virality and a lot of people coming in through their email list, right? And then, so that just, it's not the way that works, especially when you're pushing a high ticket product. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch on that too, because, you know, it drives me nuts when I see all these people that get virality and they make all this money. And then all of a sudden they come to whatever other opportunity now or shopping around from one opportunity to the next. Mm -hmm. If they don't like what they have in that program, then it just doesn't fit their needs. And they're obviously going to bump down to the next, or they're just going to figure it out. But it, it's one of those things that they should find one spot to find their mentorship, their program, their training and all that stuff and stick with that one spot in, in place. But yeah. again, you know, if you're getting taught, copy and paste it's really a really not a good thing for you or your family or the ones around you because it's not going to last well and something else i wanted to say about the difference between the you know going viral and having that be your your system for driving traffic the thing about building a long-term sustainable business is you may do affiliate marketing forever you may mm -hmm. not but when you have the right program and you have the right mentorship, you will learn how to take, just like you were saying, this, this process of creating content that's relevant to your avatar, to your target audience, bringing that, that group of people to like another platform, like a Facebook group, and then putting them in like the blender, the value blender, where you get seven hours or more of content in front of them. That's going to take them from being kind of a coldish to maybe a lukewarm lead to a fiery hot lead that is ready to buy because you've just killed it with so much value. Right. You can take that process and take it to any niche, to any product. You could work for, you could be a consultant, a marketing consultant for another business and make tons of money. So this is very much like PIB is very much like um, marketing university, <laughs> like, like <laughs> literally where you're learning how to be a digital marketer. And not true, just, a true digital you know, marketer, a true digital marketer, and not just like hope. Hope is not a strategy. Like hoping that you're going to go viral is not a strategy. And you know what? The difference between just hoping that you're going to go viral, which is it's very stressful, stressful. it's stressful, yeah. <laughs> so stressful, and having putting systems in place where you have like a reliable 
um, like day in and day out, you know that you're, you're going to be bringing in leads and you're going to be having conversations with them and you're going to be finding what the right fit is for them with the right solution. Like that is so much more reliable than the, the stress of right. there's so much stress, so much that is stressful about going viral. Then you're able to write your own check. Cause exactly. if not, if you just rely on virality and like, kind of like when videos hit per se, mm -hmm. cause it does take a little bit of time to get traction and people for, to like and trust you, obviously, cause people buy from people, not companies, mm -hmm. even Dave, whatever legendary, whatever people are not buying from Dave Sharp in a sense per se, but they're buying from the person that actually inspired them or that video, whatever it was. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that, but either way, it's like, it's really not a, a it's not a process that you want to get involved in because it is stressful trying to come out with viral content every single time. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's so much easier just to be you talking about the day to day. Hey, I woke up my hair. I have a bad hair today, hair, hair day today. Good thing I work from home or, Hey, I just had a bad hair today, day, hair day today. And I'm making a TikTok video. Really? Who cares? Right? Because this is my mission. This is what I'm trying to talk about right in the raw in the real people adapt and connect with that so much more than you you know they do right and mm -hmm. I, I know that from firsthand because i learned a lot from you and your content and the stuff you talk about has educated me to actually build what we have inside of this right and then i brought you on that's just a bonus uh with you and anthony as well and i can't wait to get anthony on the show as well hopefully he has some time in his schedule <laughs> Maybe he's watching this. I don't know. But, you know, it's just a blessing to have that kind of different avenue that nobody else in the market, I promise you, hands down is teaching what Barb is bringing to the table to help you along in your business. It doesn't matter what it is. And we're not biased. You know, it doesn't like we said, we can teach you how to promote any product there is. It doesn't matter if it's LM. It doesn't matter if it's Brambilla. It doesn't matter what it is. There's a process to it. It's duplicatable. Preach. Absolutely. Like, okay, let me see here. I was going to ask you one thing. I was looking at your, your questions over here. Um, let me see here. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah. So like, I guess what's, what's in the plan, like, you know, for this 23 you're you know, I guess we're, we're, we're coming up to a brand new year in a sense. It's, we are on a brand new year and we have a lot of months ahead of this. Right. So what, what are the plans for Barb McGowan, I guess? You know, we have any any hidden plans or anything we can spoil alert on? Oh, man. <clears throat> I mean, for me personally, obviously just crushing it, making it the best year of, um, of my life from like a business perspective, from a personal perspective. But I think more importantly, like bringing up the people who – surround me, like the people that I'm in contact with, not like, yes, my family and my close friends, like those are always going to be the people that are like first to experience, you know, any kind of abundance transfer that's happening, you know, from here out. But I think that I really want to focus on enabling people in a positive way mm -hmm. to experience that themselves and then have put, you know, push them out so they can turn around and help somebody else. And then they can push, you know, push that out to other people and so on and so forth. And I think that that's, I think that's so important. And that's how you change like your little corner of the world and how, you know, like we keep saying, whatever you want to experience, help others to get that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, you'll receive it sevenfold. Um, but I think that really focusing on client results and, going above and beyond with that, you know, and fine tuning, I think, uh, this year, huh? Yeah. Fine tuning. I think that like for me personally, like expanding to different things, um, and then really kind of finding what that new baseline looks like because it's a little bit in flux right now, but, um, I think that there's going to be just so much, abundance to be had in 2023. Um, and I just want, I just want other people to kind of shift their paradigm about, you know, how they think about what's possible because I didn't think this life was possible. No. Like if you no. would have, you know, gosh, what was it? Like almost six years ago, I was getting out of rehab and there's no way. I mean, I was, 
terrified. You know, I was scared of everything. And there's, I, if you would have told me in six years, this is where your life is going to be. I would have thought you were tripping. Right. But, um, yeah, like life can be really hard. Um, but it can also be really awesome. I guess it's the way you look at it, right? It's the way you approach situations and you overcome obstacles, right? We yeah. could either hit, hit it head on and take care of it because yeah. the only way we grow is through failure. We're going to have to find failure. And if we could find the failure enough in us to experience that pain mm -hmm. of failure and then be able to accept it for a short period of time until we have the growth, then if we can definitely wrap our minds around that and everybody here that's watching the live right now can wrap their minds around Let's experience some pain to grow in 2023, because if we're not going, you know, if we're not waking up a little bit earlier, if we're not missing, you know, the movie night with the family because we're working on our business or whatever it may be, that is painful to some people if they have to get on a routine of working up, waking up an hour early, right? Whatever it is, but start small, start with 20 minutes and 30 minutes and then 40 minutes and 50 minutes and get to an hour. Now you're able to work on your business. Right. So then you start with maybe an hour and a half early, then half half your business for the day is done. Right. But you're training yourself. You get up and you get up earlier than everybody else. Then there's no distractions. You can sit there and you can actually think about what you have going on in front of you. Execute a lot of what you have going on in just an hour and a half by waking up early and truly have a three hour a day business. Right. Truly. And, if, you know, it's possible if you just actually put your mind to it and take heed to what we here at Passive Income Blueprints teach you inside of our mastermind coaching program, it's, it's, it's astronomical, uh, right? It, it's everything, your schedule, your morning, everything, your schedule, routines, everything's laid out for you. All you have to do is implement. So um, yeah, Bar man, it's, it's, it's great meeting with you again, um, but I never thought we'd be like, you know, in this position, you know, obviously I knew, I, I knew I'd know you probably forever, uh, but I never thought that you would actually be, you know, working hand in hand with me um, and, and Anthony and the whole team to actually scale, actually change, you know, of 2023, we're actually trying to help and change lives. So yeah, it's, it's been a, a blessing. What, what are you still active on any uh, social media accounts right now? Yeah. Um, my TikTok, Facebook, um, and YouTube, I feel like that is kind of just like perennial evergreen content that, you know, is that forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and Instagram. Yeah, we got TikTok, forget. IG, and Facebook, and you see the congruency right here. We're gonna do a tick an audit. So you have the congruency on all three channels. It's the same name, right? So they're gonna remember Barb if they jump on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook just by the name, right? Mm -hmm. Notice that. And then we have uh, the roadmap. Oh, that's not that one. Then we have where's uh, the other one? Wrote Barb. Here's your YouTube channel as well. She has great content on YouTube, guys. Go check Barb out. On our YouTube channel, um, it's Barb Mc, Barb McGowan, and there's your YouTube, right? Yeah. And that just, that proves that you don't need fancy lighting and stuff to get started on YouTube because my early content was jank. <laughs> I don't even really have not really on YouTube yet, but I'm gonna yeah. be. I can't like wait to YouTube. get hot. Hundred percent. So that's where we check out Barb on our YouTube. Um, much, so much value. Screenshot this, write it down, or whatever. Um, I'm gonna go open it up for any questions please we have 25 individuals in here if you guys found value so far today just drop hashtag value in the in the comments right um you know we don't bring all the income claims and just you know it's just it's it's a different vibe here with pib it's just more value driven and then also you know it's actually trying to give you guys some kind something to leave with each day to make your life better right it doesn't even have to be in the finances it could be just a mindset thing all right, let's see here. We got all kinds of stuff going on here. Bar McGowan is a master of branding. Let me see here. You help me where I'm where you help me be where I'm where I am. I'm not sure who you are, Facebook user. Um, but if you go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, you don't have to pay nothing. I'm not sure. Somebody said that in the last live. I don't want to pay anything to comment, but you don't. Um, it's free. You just they just want to uh, basically authorize that you're allowing your text to come into Streamyard from Facebook. That's it. Um, so anybody on my right hand side that has never has not done that, it just says Facebook user. But I love the comment. Let's see here. Let me see. I'm looking for questions right now, Bar. I love the, love the hope and strategy. If there's any questions at all, we should make a shirt, Christine. 
Oh, where's Christine? What's she saying? Oh, she just said that she liked the hope is not a strategy. We'll make hope sure it's not a strategy. That's fire. It's another make a goat shirt. Hope is not a strategy, right? I want to come up with all kinds of different goat shirts. We, as we have many, we have a goat store now. We just haven't launched it to the public, but we have a full merch store coming out. It's already built. We're just waiting to waiting for everything to settle down with what we got going on. But that would be great to add to the arsenal, uh, Barb and Christine. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You go a, a, a goat girl or whatever goatee girl. Yeah, whatever you, guys, whatever you guys want to come up with, but we'll definitely add it. Yeah. Tap says you're the queen. You're you're phenomenal of what you do, Barb. You're all around the great person. I promise you that. If anybody wants to ever talk to Barb or anything, if you're going down in a, in a slump, I'm sure she wouldn't mind bending an ear, man. Like not like just go out and reach out to her for that. But she's that type of person. She'll give her, her shirt off her back to you. But just don't, you do just, me off my back. <laughs> yeah, just don't just don't just don't do it wrong though. It's okay. What's it say right here? Is it okay if you're only on TikTok right now? Don't have a Facebook group, ebook, Instagram? <clears throat> totally, Peyton. Like you're just getting started, my friend. And um, yeah, like I actually didn't start my Facebook group, so I started creating content February, <clears throat> I think seventh of two thousand twenty-one. Wow, so it's almost been two years. But so I didn't start my Facebook group till like the end of May, beginning of June. So and I waited way too long, but. Yeah, like just start with TikTok. Give yourself at least like a month to kind of start creating more effective content. Like what I always tell people is like your first 100 videos are going to suck for, <laughs> for the 99% of us. You know, yeah. my first video was so cringy. I did not edit it. I didn't have a trending sound. I didn't have captions. Uh, like there was just so much technically wrong with it. I said, hey, guys, welcome to my TikTok like <laughs> more cringy than that. That's so cringy. Uh, but you have to get all of that bad content kind of out of the way so that my second piece of content right after that was so much better mm -hmm. because I was like, oops, I forgot this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. But like you have to create bad content before you can start to create effective content. And so like, don't be putting bad content out on like five different platforms. Start with TikTok and kind of get the hang of, okay, this is how you craft a hook that's going to grab people's attention. This is how you craft a, a compelling story. And here's how you make a strong, clear call to action. That's going to get people to actually take an action. So give yourself a little bit of time. I'd say maybe like a month or so, maybe two. Um, and then you can kind of expand to Facebook and Instagram and start, you know, kind of being omnipresent and not overwhelm yourself by trying to do it all at once. Gotcha. That's fire advice. There's another one. Spoke about congruency of your name. Do you use your real name or an alias, Barb? Like, what would you suggest? I guess it's personal preference, but I'll let you speak on it. Yeah. So what I always say is like, like I own barbmcgowan.com. And that's always kind of been like my home base for all my funnels and stuff. Um, I know a lot of people will say, like, make their social media handles, like, make money with X or X marketer or something like that. Um, what I always suggest is like, just use your first name and last name. And if you can't do that because of like privacy reasons or like your, your employer or whatever, your first name and your middle name, or, you know, something where it's going to allow you to be, build your personal brand and be identifiable. And you are making a name for yourself and not for being an affiliate or not for being a marketer or not right. for make money online with such and such. That's just kind of my personal philosophy. So um, if you're able to, I say, you know, use your, your name or something thereabouts. It doesn't have oh, to be yeah. like, it could be your first and middle name, you know? Yeah. Cause it, it's a lot easier to connect to somebody with an offer and a face with a name, all that stuff. Totally. Yeah. And it yeah. opens you up too. You're opening yourself up a little bit more. Hey, my name's, my name's George, you know, right. right. And, you know, being standoffish, not tell them your name at all and expect right. them to just go click on your link without even telling them your name. Right. You know it's you like, wanna, yeah. yeah. Barb McGowan. It's like, Oh, that's who that person is versus make money online with Barb. Right. Which to me has like the, I'm here to sell you something kind of vibe to it. Absolutely. Let's see what we got here. I had family issues. Should I come for the next secret? Wait to do that again. No, I want everybody. If anybody's, uh, I don't know who, who is that? Brian? 
Oh, you can definitely come, brother. Anybody that missed Secret One, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tie all of it together in the, the webinar. I'm going to tie all three secrets together. I'm going to bring it together. You're going to get, I'm bringing up pretty much all the information that was in Secret One. It bleeds into each secret because that's what creates the foundation, right? Um, is what is it passive income blueprints? So I'm teaching you passive income blueprint secrets, right? And that's truly our foundation, what we are, what we're, what we run off of. That's how, what we, that's it, right? So anyways, that's what we're giving away and telling and teaching you. So you're definitely able to come at the webinar and, and tie it all together. Hi, uh, this is Annette. She and I, oh, right here. <laughs> oh, hey, Annette. All right, here's another one. Mm, good one. When you're starting out, should the focus be more on branding yourself or what you're promoting? Definitely branding yourself always. Like, what I would suggest is when you're starting off, start by like, think of creating content on TikTok as going on a first date or meeting a new friend. Like you start at the beginning, like start at the beginning when you create content, which is here's who I am. Here's why I'm here. And here's like what my goal is for, you know, being on TikTok. Um, and you can just let people know, like <laughs> in my very cringy first piece of content, I was like, Hey, welcome to my TikTok. I would not suggest using that as a hook. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you're watching this right now, it's probably because you are also sick and tired of your nine to five job and the whole concept of work 40 hours a week for 40 years of your life and hope that you make it to retirement. Um, like what I'm about is learning new skills and figuring out a different way of making money so that I don't have to do that. So if that's you too, and you resonate with that, give me a follow. Like, let's take this journey together. Literally almost verbatim. That was my very first TikTok. And then I kind of in my second TikTok went into more like my story, which was, <clears throat> you know, I'm a teacher and the pandemic really like changed the scope of my work. You know, instead of being, you know, doing teaching, which I love, it's like a little bit of teaching, but a lot of administration and grant writing and budgets and spreadsheets and desk work. And I hate that. And so I'm looking for a plan B and this is what I'm doing to, you know, kind of pursue that. So really like kind of building step by step on each piece of preceding content, but like telling your story and get allowing people to get to know you, you know, going back to that analogy of if it's mm -hmm. a first date or if you're meeting a new friend, that's kind of the steps that you would take. And so if you come out the gate swinging, like, Hey, click the link or, you know, comment me if you want to buy the thing I'm promoting. Like there's no quicker way to alienate someone than to come out and be like, I'm here to get something out of you. Right. You know what I mean? So definitely always be branding yourself, always be promoting yourself in a way, like telling your story, uh, sharing things that might feel a little bit vulnerable, sharing things you're learning along the way, how you're changing and developing and growing so that people can see like, wow, I started following her a month and a half ago and now look at her. And it might not be monetary. It might be, I can tell the difference in how her content looks. Her early content was jank. Mm -hmm. This content is so much better. And it's really cool to see that progress. And I want to do what she's doing. I think if she could do it, she's just wearing a Snuggie for God's sakes. Like I could certainly do it. Absolutely. Um, I think that's about the, all the questions for sure. But, you know, it's just really important to brand yourself. And now when you come out with that, I guess, clickbaiting material where it's just go to my link in my bio right away. Typically, that's a strategy that they brought from paid ads because they optimized or they made sure that the offer converted very efficiently first. And then they were able to put money towards it. So rather than you don't have to brand yourself, it's just like click the link, click the link, click the link. And they're putting money towards that. Right. So it kind of filtered over and it got missed. Like it got it got it got torn in two pieces to where there's low ticket high affiliate marketing and there's high ticket affiliate marketing and there is a difference. And then they try to sandwich them together with a low front end offer to tie it into the high ticket upsell. But that's probably over a lot of people's heads, but that's kind of like the, the way that it's all been done. Now everybody's expecting to do a least amount of work, send them to a, a, a funnel and click on it without talking to who, whoever it is and expect them to purchase a 25 or 300, 3,000, $5,000 product without really even talking to anybody at all, right? And if they do, they be misled. So there's a there's definitely a different process that, you know, is, it could be done in. But that's the, I don't know. I, I don't know why I even said that, but it, there's definitely a difference. I want everybody to know the difference between low ticket and high ticket. And when you want to really 
promote and push the high tickets efficiently, um, I guess it's going to be more of a branding process. Then that's also going to be you, you're branding yourself. So at any time you can walk away from that company and build your own brand, right? You're not just going to rely on that one company. If they fall, you're done kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know. That's, I, I keep going on about stuff. I got to have a timer. I'll just, okay, I'm talk now, bing, and then I'll, whatever. But anyways, guys, um, we have the GOAT show every Tuesday and Thursday. So if you guys want to get automated updates through your text messaging, please just text GOATS to 21,000. It's all capital letters. So screenshot that, take a picture or whatever, or you can remember it. Um, then that'd be awesome too. But Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'll get notifications for about, about 10 minutes before it actually starts. We will bring a lot of guests onto the show, um, not just students, but other uh, people that I will be meeting in the industry that's going to provide value for you. Um, so this this show is for the people. It's for you guys to actually un understand like what affiliate marketing is, the ins and outs, the mindset behind it, the things that people don't talk about, right? And so it's really important you guys are aware of these things before you jump into an opportunity that you may not be able to do because honestly... It, it does take a certain type of individual that has a certain type of mindset that wants change. You know, it's not impossible, but you have to be in that, that state of mind of you want change and nothing's going to stop you. Then I promise you this opportunity will work for you or any opportunity out there will work for you. You just have that mindset that you, you can and want change and then you stay consistent, right? Know that road, that valley despairs and, and roadblocks are going to come along the way, but that's when you double down and that's when you, you tackle uh, fear in the face, you tackle uh, obstacles in the face, right, Barm? Mm -hmm. And that's why it pays to have a community of people that know what you're going through and they will support you. And having a mentor that's been there, done that, and can say, oh, yeah, that's normal. 100%. Like, imagine I can't, the, the amount of stress that I could have saved by having somebody guiding me along the way when I first started telling me, oh, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> like, I would have went gone to sleep and been able to actually sleep instead of being constantly stressed and constantly on edge and, you know, for the first few months of my, of my journey. Um, so no, as far as YouTube, uh, I didn't stream in there in too many places today because I was my bandwidth. I got hundred meg internet. I have to increase that more, but when you, when you stream to more than like two locations, then it gets really choppy on my end. So to answer your questions, uh, I wasn't like, I, uh, this morning over there see right there it froze up i just talked about it see how manifest manifestation works i talked about it i put that bad energy out there and then bow like, right pow you know what i mean it just that's how it works you should All go right, my in. <laughs> oh d spear d spear got a new domain love it okay guys so check it out we have we last night we done the secret number one uh tomorrow we're doing secret number two and then thursday do, doing secret number three free, free trainings. And we have a live webinar that I'm tying all of these trainings in together. It's more value for you guys, right? I do love to teach. I love to talk. I love to be in front of this camera. Um, and I love to just provide value. So if you guys don't attend these, well, you suck <laughs> kind of thing, right? So basically www.roadmaptosuccess.training is going to get you into the webinar sign up. Now you won't have to sign up every time you just sign up one time and then i'm gonna give you notifications right it's your responsibility to check the notifications i got so many people last night i didn't get no notifications i sent them to you on calendly i sent them to you guys on uh, uh text messaging i sent them to you an email right so i, I don't want to hear that excuse no more right but either way um barb it was great meeting with you today guys uh barb and the whole crowd you know as we start doing the show more and more Obviously, the, the, the crowd is going to get bigger, but it, what, what we're looking at right now is true fans of people of Passive Income Blueprints. Not only that, Barb McGowan. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to give a, a round of applause to Barb McGowan because, you know, bring her on to Passive Income Blueprints is a blessing, 100%. Barb, I'm going to go ahead and let you take us out, and then we'll just go from there. My, 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 my sister, sister. <laughs> my man. My, I was going to say my man, but I couldn't even say that, figure out how to say that, but my, my sister. Gosh, yeah. Just go out there and... Every day is going to be a new set of challenges and issues and obstacles and control what you can control. Like grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Like figure out what you can control and what you can't let go of the stuff you can't control. You can't control the sky being blue. You know, there's no sense in getting angry or upset about it. 
but you can control what you do, your behaviors and how you perceive things and how you receive things and then how you take action based on that. So yeah, focus on doing you and good things will happen. Absolutely. Well, thank you once again, Barb. Um, just great to have you inside Passive Income Blueprints and just helping so many folks along the way in their journey. Uh, and just, yeah, super, super happy to have you. Thanks again, Barb. You have a blessed day. And that's it from now. <clears throat> Likewise. All right. Please. Talk to you later.